If you can hear me and see me, you guys, welcome to another happy hour hang. We have so much to be getting into to into today, you guys. I can't even speak. I'm so excited. I'm so ready to get into it. I'm seeing you all in the chat, already discussing, already talking. I'm absolutely living for it. I see everyone telling each other hello. Gabby said, I love this community. Gabby, I am right there with you. We have so much to get into, you guys. We're gonna be talking about a possible reboot that is going to be making millennials very, very happy. Even when I told my sister what reboot we're gonna be talking about today, she got super excited. So I can't wait to share that with you guys. Then we have so much many updates when it comes to Christine Quinn from Selling Sunset. The situation with her husband and his arrest is just getting messier, crazier, scarier. We have a lot to get into there. We're also going to be talking about Eva Mendes and Ryan Gosling. We have some baby news. Also a big Royals update, which I know always gets the discussions flowing. We're going to be talking about Kate Middleton and how allegedly nobody in her close circle knew about her cancer diagnosis. And also we're going to be talking about whether or not Kate and William want Harry and Meghan to come to the UK and visit Kate during this time. We're also going to be talking about Lamar Odom and Khloe Kardashian, Kim Kardashian and Bianca Sensory, you guys. Kim is being called out for copying Bianca on Instagram. Can't wait to discuss it. Also an update on Bianca's family and how they feel about Kanye West. Spoiler alert, Bianca's dad is still not happy, still wants a confrontation. Then we're also gonna be talking about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey because TMZ tried to come for Tavis, you guys. They tried to come for Tavis. People then came for Taylor and Travis, which I wasn't here for, calling them entitled, selfish, dragging them. So you already know this had to be added to the rundown because we had had to get people together. I'm just so irritated, so over it. Here I am already talking with my hands. So you know the passion is already coming out. Then of course, you guys, we're going to get into all of this Diddy and Justin Bieber tea. So many resurfaced videos. So many videos that are just honestly giving me a pit in my stomach and fueling a conspiracy theory that a lot of people have been talking about since the Diddy news broke. Also, you guys, wait until you hear who is doing a documentary on Diddy. Let me just, I will give you one hint as of right now. It is a House of Hill fave. It is a House of Hill fave who is working on a documentary about Diddy and I cannot wait to get into that to you guys. So much to get into. Miss Kim, hello. Kim said, hi, Maddie and House of Hill fam. I hope everyone is having a great day. Kim, thank you for being here. I'm so, so happy you're here. I hope you're having a great day and I hope this happy hour hang makes your day even better. Yes, you guys are already guessing because you know I love, I love Shady Fofty. I love Shady Fofty. I love you guys for knowing that just based on the hint. That is why I love you guys and we always see eye to eye. Hi, George. Hi, Jessica. I see Erica's in the chat as well. Jocelyn said, TMZ always trying to come for Tavis. It happened as Travis called them out. Today they said Travis has a dad bod. Oh, you already know I saw that. And I love that Travis Kelsey subtly addressed this on the new episode of New Heights, being like, it's March, I'm off, leave me alone. Isn't it crazy? that we live in a world that I will say at least, for the most part, at least body shaming is not exclusive to just women. At least the men are also feeling the effects of that as well. Um, but it's just absolutely insane to me how anyone could try to say that Travis Kelsey looks bad. Like, hello, I don't even have great eyesight and I can tell you that Travis Kelsey is looking Chef's kiss, absolutely incredible. Um, let's see, we have a new House of Hill member in the chat, Yvette, hello. I saw that you said you are a new subscriber. I am so happy that you're here. Yes, Yvette, I'm a new subscriber to your live. Hello, welcome to the House of Hill. We're so happy to have you. 
We go live every Monday and Wednesday for our happy hour hang at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. So I'm so happy you caught this live. We always catch up for the first like 10 to 12 minutes for everybody who's new to the happy hour hangs, a new subscriber here. Hello, welcome. We're so happy you're here. We're so happy that you're growing with us. Um, the first 10 to 12 minutes of every live is always just us catching up, me catching up with the House of Hill, talking about whatever you guys want to talk about, and then we get into the tea. And then at the end, I always open it up for any personal questions or any tea that you guys want to discuss. So that's kind of how the structure of the happy hour hangs work. And also while I'm here and while I'm talking business, um, I wanna remind everyone to please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Please make sure you're subscribed. And also y'all, go ahead and click that notification bell. We know that notifications here on YouTube are 50-50 on whether or not they work. So really the best way to make sure that you are at a happy hour hang on time is to just set an alarm on your phone, refrigerator, microwave, whatever you need to do. Um, it's always best to just set a personal alarm, but still go ahead and click that notification bell just in case. And also, again, make sure you're hitting that thumbs up button because it does help YouTube know that people are watching and engaging. And if people haven't gotten their notification yet, it usually does kind of help push those out. Also, one last thing, one last little piece of business. Um, I also want to shout out our after watchers. I always want to make sure we do that and show them some love because y'all, we could not keep these happy hour hangs going if it was not for the after watchers. So make sure to send them some love. I always want to make sure I send them some love. We see you. We love you. And I am so happy that everybody is here. Yes, Sacred Space. Shout out to all the International House of Hill members, honestly. Shout out to the, our international fam because y'all stay up late like crazy to make sure you get the tea. And that is something I will never, ever, ever not be grateful for because y'all know I have a grandma bedtime. So for the international girlies who stay up late, Juliet, hello from Nigeria. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for staying up so late and for taking in the tea. Valentina said, by now I've memorized the time. When I saw the clock, I just connect. 11.42 p.m., yes. Jelena said, today was my day off and I did a lot. Played some Pokemon, did some spiritual studying, worked out, spent some time with my bunny and worked on my personal project. This live is the best way to end it. Jelena, you just have the most productive day I've ever heard. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The fact that you could even fit a happy hour hang into the schedule is mind boggling. So thank you for being here. We have Joy here. We also have Star 500. Just want to let you know you make me smile. Thank you, Star 500. Followed you for so long and thanks for supporting my articles back in the day. You know I'm always here to support you guys. Whatever y'all have going on, I am here to have your back and support you. So I am also in your corner. Just like you're in my corner, I'm in your corner as well. I love seeing everybody say hello to one another. I have Jeremiah. I always stay up for your videos. Jeremiah, thank you. Miss Tabitha's here. Jenny's here. Oh my God, everyone's making it today. Freaky Walrus is here as well. Making my first pot roast 100% by myself right now, guys, as a 30-year-old adult without the help of my parents. Wish me luck, y'all. Freaky Walrus, First of all, go ahead and pat yourself on the back because I'm also 30 and have never once attempted a pot roast by myself, although that sounds absolutely bomb. So definitely living for that, living for you. You got this. I also am loving low. I'm working, but LOL, Lo said, we multitask here. We work and we take in the tea, and that is what I love to see, honestly. Um, I have Victoria. These happy hour hangs have become the best time for my husband, George, and I. Oh my God, Victoria, I love George. And I love that you guys are taking this, oh my God, taking in the tea together. Are you kidding me? That literally just made my day. Couples who tea together stay together. So Victoria and George, I love it. Mom and dad of the House of Hill, thank you for being here. I'm so happy you guys are watching this together. I know we have a couple couples out there who love to watch the tea together and truly nothing makes me happier. I feel like Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey them getting together has helped us in more ways than one because I feel like it's it's turned us into sports people as well, which helps bring in, helps pique some of the guy's interest. You know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, we're talking about sports. We were talking about OBJ 
for a little bit. But now that him and, you know, Kim K are allegedly done, we talked about that on Monday. I don't know how much more we're going to be talking about OBJ unless he gets involved in some mess Then you already know we're going to be discussing. Um, we also have Mama Cass in the chat as well. Oh, no, Jax is still so sick. Ugh, I still have no voice and cough won't go away. Okay, Cass, sit back, relax, take in the tea. I love that Layla is also working in the office, but listening. You guys are the best multitaskers, honestly. Honestly, the best multitaskers. We have Allie, second day in North Carolina after two six-hour days in the car with a husband and our two cats. First day at the new job starts Monday. Allie, I'm living for it. You guys know we said 2024 is the year of House of Hill. This is all of our year. And Allie's already well on her way there, starting a new job on Monday. I'm living for it. Jessica said, quit my job an hour ago because boss was disrespectful. You are the distraction I need. Anxiety through the roof now. I no idea what I'm going to do. I just know it was the right decision. Need some good vibes. Jessica, the good vibes are being sent to you. You know that I am no stranger to quitting a job when someone's disrespectful to you. So Jessica, just know I've been there. I've been there and it's scary AF. It is scary AF, but you have to go with your gut and it will be okay. Just everything will work out. If you believe with every fiber of your being that it's gonna work out, it will work out. So just remember that you got this, you got us. And now I think it's time to get into a little distraction for you. So let's go ahead and get into that tea, you guys. Um, Jelena, I love what Jelena said. Choosing your heart is always the best choice to make. I quit my job and life has been up ever since. That it's the first step to choosing you. Absolutely. Also, Tamara is here as well. Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and get into some tea, get into some distractions. Remember, that is what these happy hour hangs are for. They are our time to just forget about whatever is making us anxious, whatever is stressing us out, and it is our time to hang, catch up, and spill the tea. So let's go ahead and get into it, you guys. My fellow millennials, get ready for this. There is a reboot of John Tucker Must Die in the works 18 years later. Where are my people who loved John Tucker Must Die as much as me? Please let me know in the chat. I was thrilled to see this news that John Tucker Must Die is getting a reboot. So Jesse Metcalf, who obviously was the main guy in the film, Michaela's, Michaela's living for it, Valentina's living for it. Jesse Metcalf, you guys, was recently at Epicon and he was on a panel and he said that he's heard the rumors that there is a script for a John Tucker Must Die reboot and apparently it's amazing. Jesse Metcalf said that he hasn't read it yet, but he can't wait to and that he would love to be a part of it. Now, his co-star from the film, Ariel Cabell, is allegedly involved in producing the reboot, you guys, and she previously shared that the script involves all of the OG cast members and that the sequel will give Jesse, aka John Tucker, a chance to change. Also, you guys, Sophia Bush also confirmed that she's ready to go whenever the John Tucker Must Die reboot is ready. So I am so pumped for this. This was one of my like favorite, rom it wasn't even a rom-com. It was one of my just favorite movies growing up. I feel like it was such an iconic movie all of the girls coming together to bring down John Tucker. Um, Brittany Snow obviously was also in that film. It was just all around such a good movie and I cannot wait to see how they will do a reboot of it 18 years later. Like I obviously feel like John Tucker has to be an adult by now. Hopefully he changes, allegedly that's what's gonna happen. But I would be so here for this reboot. Yep, Ashanti was in it as well. Um, okay, I'm glad that you guys love this movie as much as me. Except Star 500 said, I have not seen this throwback. I'm confused. Okay, Star 500, we need to look up where you can stream John Tucker Must Die. And you need to watch it because it is an iconic 2000s film. Iconic. I know we have all ages in this chat, which I absolutely live for. But if you are on the younger end, and April, never heard of it until now. If you have not heard, it is not a dark comedy, Dave. It is just good old classic 2000s teen comedy. Um, if you have not watched it, I highly, highly recommend. Great movie about women getting revenge on a man who dates multiple women at once. 
Do I need to say more? Also, 222 people already in the chat. Everyone manifest something. Miss Jessica, manifest that next gig. Okay, also if you're new here as well, whenever the viewers hits an angel number, we like to manifest whatever we're trying to bring into our lives. Um, so if you ever see me pause and close my eyes and really just look like I'm praying, manifesting, that's why we're doing it because whenever it hits an angel number, we love to push our manifestations forward. So yes, Life with, Mar Life with Marissa, don't forget to like. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, it's on Disney+. Plus. Jessica, thank you for letting us know. Okay, so if you have not seen John Tucker Must Die, definitely go watch it on Disney+. Plus. Highly, highly recommend. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Christine Quinn from Selling Sunset. Then, you guys, we're going to talk about Eva Mendez, Ryan Gosling, Baby News, Royals, Lamar Chloe, Kim and Bianca, Taylor and Travis, and we're going to get into the Diddy and Bieber tea. So now going back to Christine Quinn from Selling Sunset. For those of you who have not watched Selling Sunset, it's the real estate reality show on Netflix. Christine Quinn was the one with the long blonde hair. She was like the villain of the first couple seasons, okay? Now, if you remember, last week we talked about how her husband was arrested for assault with a deadly weapon after Christine accused him of throwing a bag filled with a glass bottle at her. She said that it missed her and actually hit their two-year-old son. That was the story that came out last week. He was arrested and Christine was given a seven-day temporary protective order. Ms. Cass, so I after watched your vertical live yesterday, was mad I missed the live. Please keep doing them. I loved it. Cass, thank you. I needed that little reassurance, that little, you know, push to keep doing them. Um, you guys, I'm trying to implement doing some more vertical lives throughout the week whenever there's kind of a breaking news situation, or if I just want to connect with you guys instead of doing a pop-off. So I will absolutely keep doing those. Um, so now you guys, this seven day temporary restraining order for Christine is obviously up. She's filed for a more permanent temporary restraining order. But what's interesting is her husband, the one who was arrested, also filed for a temporary restraining order against Christine. And he claimed that everything she told police was a lie. He says that his account of what happened on the day that he was arrested is that he, that they share two dogs. He says that Christine has not trained the dogs, okay, and that they constantly go to the bathroom all over the house. On the day that he was arrested, he claims that one of the dogs peed on some of his important belongings. Christine was trying to clean up, and he says out of anger... He threw a trash bag filled with rags at the wall, okay? He says, after he did this, Christine picked up their two-year-old son, locked herself in a room, called the cops, fed them this story about him throwing the glass bottle, and he was arrested. He thinks Christine did this to get the upper hand in a potential divorce, which is why he tried to file a protective order, which a judge denied, by the way, pending a hearing. Now, like I said two seconds ago, Christine once again has filed for a new temporary restraining order and temporary full custody of their child. Christine claims that their marriage has been on the decline for several years and reached a boiling point last week when she tried to address the family's financial woes, which I'm going to pause there really quick because y'all remember when we were talking about Christian getting arrested, I told y'all that his bail was $30,000 and that he hadn't posted the bail. And I think it was Jelena who was like, you only have to post 10%. Why isn't he posting the bail if he's supposedly this millionaire? And remember, we kind of had a theory that they might be having financial issues. And I just want to say, we were spot on. Our detective skills were detectiving, everybody. So allegedly, Christine tried to address this with Christian. And then she said prior to the incident, um, her and Christian had been having some toxicity. She said that at one point he threw decorative items at her. He peed on the floor and he threw dog feces at her, which is why she decided to leave. And then she said the day that she was packing up her stuff 
is when the alleged incident with the glass bottle occurred, the cops were called, all of that. So Jelena said, what in the euphoria? Literally. So essentially, whether you know these people or not, just know a reality show and a he said, she said situation. She's saying he's toxic. He's abusive. I was trying to leave. He wouldn't let me leave. Some ish went down. He's saying she's a liar. That's not what happened. I just got angry and now I can't trust her. He said, she said. I honestly, you guys know I told you this whenever I first reported on the fact that he was arrested. This man has always given me the ick, personally. I just never liked how he talked about the other women. So, of course, obviously, an investigation has to take place. Obviously, we will wait and see what happens. Um, but either way, either way, I am prone to obviously believe Christine. But, again, we have to wait and see what happens. And that's literally just based on me watching the show and this man giving me the ick. And me not liking that. Me not liking how he's talked about women on television. Um, it's really, really insane. Dream Haven said, okay, and I'm sure the cops checked the scene. How would he explain the glass or the injury to the kid? Dream Haven, that's what I was also thinking too. Let's remember that after he was arrested, paramedics were on the scene and the little boy and Christine were taken to the hospital via ambulance. I don't think that would have happened if he just allegedly threw a bag of trash at the wall out of anger. But I mean... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Jelena said, I haven't seen the show like that, but I can't say who I believe who I can't say who I believe who by logic. However, intuitively, I believe her just because those are abusive patterns. I mean, throwing dog feces, you know what I mean? Ugh. Ugh. That is just sick. Sick, sick, sick. So obviously, I think what we do know is that this situation is not you did it's fine. We do know that this situation is not anywhere near over. We obviously hope the child is safe. I see that that is our main concern, which I completely 1 million percent agree with you guys. Um, and obviously this is all just horrible. Jackie X said the math ain't mathing and I agree. And hopefully there is a resolution. Hopefully everyone ends up safe, most importantly, the child, um, but definitely just a nasty, nasty, nasty situation. Um, so I will definitely keep an eye on that for you guys because, again, I said this when the news came out about his arrest. I feel like we were on the brink of a lot more coming out, and here's, here's just the start of it. So I think this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Christine Quinn and her husband, Christian. And honestly, the Selling Sunset cast. I also saw, for those of you who watch Selling Sunset, just a little extra tea for y'all. Uh, Maria, we're talking about Selling Sunset. Just a little extra tea. Chelsea from Selling Sunset, who I love, the British girly, um, she just filed to divorce her husband after seven years of marriage. So I was really upset to see that. I love them together. I personally have met them at a Netflix event and thought that they were a lovely, super cute couple. Um, so to find out that Chelsea is divorcing her husband from Selling Sunset, that also made me sad to hear. But, you know, I just wanted to fill you guys in on that little added tea for those of you who watch that show. Um, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Eva Mendez and Ryan Gosling. And I wanted to add this to the rundown, you guys for the moms in the chat, because I know we got a lot of mamas in the chat. And I wanted to add this to the rundown because I think it is so refreshing to hear a celebrity take joy and pride in being a mom. Um, because a lot of times I feel like with women in Hollywood, there's this pressure that you have to work and be a mom and figure out how to do all a thousand things. And people sometimes look down upon women who are cool just being a mom. And I... I'm so happy to fill you guys in on this tea. So Eva Mendez was on the Today Show this morning, you guys, and she opened up about her career taking a backseat to Ryan Gosling's. She said that once they got together, it was kind of an unspoken agreement that he would continue to work and she would stay at home and work by raising their kids. She gushed about Ryan's work ethic and commitment to his craft and how whenever he's not on set, he's with their family. She said whenever she does choose to do something work-related, it's something that doesn't take her far from home 
And honestly, you guys, again, I just loved this interview. I love that Eva Mendez owns being a mom. Um, I love that she talks about how her and Ryan Gosling just kind of had this unspoken agreement that this is how it's going to go down. And I'm so happy also that she did this interview because I feel like a lot of times people like kind of drag Eva Mendez because she rarely shows up to the red carpet events with Ryan Gosling. You know, she's not really in the public eye as much as him. And I feel like sometimes people are like, well, where's Eva? Why isn't she supporting Ryan? And it's like, everyone just zip your lids. She is supporting Ryan. She's supporting their family. She's fine. She is doing what she wants to be doing. And moms are freaking superhumans. Dads are superhumans too. But I think we all know moms and dads, it's, it's a little bit of a different situation. And I just love that she is owning being a mom. I feel like that rarely just rarely happens. I know Kourtney Kardashian did that for a little bit, but it just feels different when Eva Mendes is talking about it for some reason. Whenever Kourtney was talking about it, it felt like an excuse not to do other things. Whereas Eva Mendes is like, my kids are my life and this is my job. It just is giving a different tone. You know what I mean? Um, Sam, Samified by Sam said, when you have a kid, you really do enjoy staying at home with them as much as possible. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Nora said, proud stay at home mama. I love using my early childhood education degree and focusing it on my own children. Um, Cass said, I want to work, but my hub said I didn't have to if it gets to be too much. Cass, love your hubs. Erica said, I respect her for putting her family first and protecting their privacy. Absolutely, absolutely. Layla said, <laughs> Layla said, I'm a mom and I'm not buying it. Layla said, why is this woman glorifying the hardest job on the planet? Uh, it is really, really freaking difficult. I am giggling. I'm giggling. I'm giggling. Kim said, I'm really out of loop. I had no idea they were a couple. No, they've been together for actually several years. Now they they haven't officially gotten married, um, just long-term partners. And honestly, they are a couple that stays so low key, so out of the spotlight. Um, but I think that kind of might be why they have such a strong relationship. I kind of feel like the celebrity couples who lay low, sometimes it's a lot easier for them to have a more normal life. And they actually live outside of Santa Barbara, which is like two hours from the hustle bustle of LA. So they're just living their best lives. You know what I mean? I absolutely, absolutely live for it. Star 500 said, I would love to be a homeschool mom one day maybe. I have thoughts about the education system. Yep. Uh, Dora said, yes, raising a family is the most important of all. I mean, I also think I'm biased here because Mama Hill was a stay-at-home mom for most of our life until we were probably, maybe I was like fifth grade, sixth grade, um, and then her and Papa Hill owned their own business. But she was a stay-at-home mom the whole time we were younger, and it was honestly the best thing ever. So I'm probably biased as to why I love this Eva Mendez interview, but we just had the best freaking time. And she was on us. Like during the summers, I see some of you talking about, you know, having your childhood education. Um, Mama Hill definitely made us do homework during the summer. It was no joke, which honestly I think helped us in school whenever we went back to school. But yeah, she definitely made us still do our times tables and read and all of those things. It was not just, you know, arts and crafts all the time at the Hill House. Absolutely not. Mama Hill said, we are we're keeping up those skills, which honestly, so thankful that she did that. But I love so much all of the comments about all of the moms in the chat, you guys talking about Eva, Stoic Bladder made it. So I'm living for it. Um, okay, you guys, let's go ahead and move on and talk about some baby news. I guess we're keeping with the theme of moms. Um, some baby news, you guys, that I just want to fill you in on. Uh, Ashley Tisdale announced that she's expecting her second child with her husband, Christopher French. We live for that. Yay, Ashley Tisdale. Um, also, while it does pain me to deliver this news, I am happy for him. Hi, Naomi. I'm happy you made it. Robert Pattinson is a dad, you guys. You know, I'm a Twilight girly. Team Edward all the way. Robert Pattinson was my first, well, not my first true love, but one of my first love crushes. And he is officially a dad with Suki Waterhouse. They welcomed their child. Their child is officially here. Um, she was seen pushing a light pink stroller around LA. Um, and yeah, you guys, can you believe Edward Cullen's a dad? 
Well, I mean, obviously he becomes a dad in Breaking Dawn, but still, um, it's definitely crazier in real life. So congrats to Ashley Tisdale. Congrats to Robert Pattinson and Suki Waterhouse. I, <laughs> Sacred Space said, that's right. Robert Pattinson is a father now. Wow, exactly. Jeremiah said, all my childhood stars are becoming parents, right? Marie Gold said, Ashley and Vanessa both pregnant. You know that was one of the first things I thought about because remember when Ashley Tisdale was on Watch What Happens Live recently, she kind of made it sound like her and Vanessa Hudgens have a little bit of beef. Um, but I'm hoping now that they're both with child, they're both pregnant, hopefully they can refine some common ground. So hopefully that'll help them. But I agree, yay for growing families. Epic Turtle said, I hope they become close again. And that's how I feel as well. That's how I feel as well. Um, Sacred Space, Renesme, AKA Robert and Bella, Robert, Edward and Bella's Child and Breaking Dawn. Um, absolutely live for it. Sam said, oh, maybe they could bond over them being pregnant together. I agree. I agree. Uh, Miss Jackie said, wait for these celebrities to call me old. Oh, Miss Jackie, you are not alone. Not alone. How do you, when I hear that Ashley Tisdale's expecting her second child and I'm like, Ugh. have a mild panic attack, but it's totally fine. It's totally fine. We're living for them. We're loving it. We love seeing these celebs grow and evolve. Okay, let's go ahead and move on, you guys, and get into this royalty. Everyone prepare, because you know, these days, whenever we talk about the royal family, things get intense. Uh, Tabitha, yes, Vanessa Hudgens is also pregnant now. She debuted her pregnant belly at the Oscars, and she looks incredible. Um, okay, you guys, new report from People Magazine about Kate Middleton or Princess Catherine, whichever you prefer. I was educated as of recently in the comments that... Kate doesn't prefer being called Kate or something that people like to, in the UK, they prefer calling her Princess Catherine. So I wanted to make sure I used both terms, Kate Middleton or Princess Catherine, whichever you prefer. According to a source who spoke to People Magazine, none of Kate's close friends or confidants knew of her cancer diagnosis prior to her statement. The source said that it was, quote, a heck of a shock. Apparently, the circle of knowledge was, quote, very tight. Now, I feel like this report from People Magazine, which y'all know, I believe People Magazine 98% of the time. I feel like this report from People Magazine about nobody close to Kate knowing about her cancer diagnosis kind of fuels those conspiracy theories because we talked a little bit about this on Monday. There are people who think that video announcement of Kate is AI. And I feel like this People Magazine report saying nobody close to her knew what was going on is fueling people's questions of what's really going on with Kate. Is this, is this what it is? Why didn't anyone know? Who was in that very tight circle? And unfortunately... As much as it sucks, because I know a lot of people are going to be upset that people are still questioning her now that we know what's going on and all of that. Unfortunately, because the royal family let people run with their own narrative for so long, that is why everything is going to be questioned moving forward. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just giving you guys a little explanation as to why everyone is so suspicious of everything that comes out about Kate, even with her making that video announcement. Um, yeah, I see a lot of you saying not AI. I believe her. You guys know on Monday, I said, I'm choosing to believe the video. I'm choosing not to feed into the AI um, theories. I've still seen a bunch of stuff on TikTok. I've still seen a bunch of stuff on, you know, Twitter and her ring disappears. Her ring doesn't disappear. The background doesn't move. Like all of these things. Um, the BBC did help in the production of the video and the BBC is like one of my most trusted news sources. So I'm choosing to believe the video, you guys. Um, Jolie said AI is very good now. I know, and you guys know AI scares me, honestly. AI really, really scares me. Um, 
But I'm choosing to believe the video. I'm choosing to believe that Kate is seeking treatment and I will continue uh, to wish her well, obviously, and send her all of the positive healing vibes because I think at the end of the day, that is of the utmost importance. Now, in addition to that People Magazine report, you guys, we also have a new report from the Daily Beast about Kate and William not wanting Harry to visit them during this time. The story said, quote, Catherine and William have been very clear they want peace and quiet for them and the kids. A visit from Harry with all the drama that would bring would be the opposite of that. So we know that Harry rushed to King Charles' side whenever his cancer diagnosis became public. And people, I think, were wondering if Harry was going to do the same for Catherine. And Catherine and William are saying, respectfully, please stay across the pond. So he, in my opinion, I do not think will be going over to in-person check on Kate and William. Uh, Sacred Space said, if William didn't even tell Harry about it, he wouldn't want him to visit, in my opinion. No, absolutely. I also think like this report came out a little preemptively because we didn't even hear any rumors of Harry wanting to go visit. Um, unless maybe some conversations were happening in quiet or in quiet behind closed doors that they then felt this report needed to be leaked and put out there. So that way Harry and Megan knew we don't want any visitors or we don't want you to visit us. Um, but again, I think it just goes to show how divided Harry and William are. And obviously that's common knowledge at this point. And you know, their familial attention goes beyond probably even what the public will ever know. But the fact that William is going through this hard of a time and he does not want his brother near him, holy moly, they really cannot stand one another, in my opinion. That is insane. Um, also, you guys, I wanted to just reiterate something because for those of you who missed my vertical live yesterday, if you're seeing headlines about Prince Harry being named in one of Diddy's lawsuits, that is a misleading headline, okay? Prince Harry's name was given as an example of one of the high profile people who Diddy had access to. He was not accused of partaking in any wrongdoing. We will obviously talk more about Diddy later on in this live, but I'm just saying, these headlines of like Prince Harry being named in a Diddy lawsuit are everywhere and they are not necessarily accurate. They're, I mean, they're accurate in the sense of he was given as an example, but I feel like the headlines are making it seem like he's being sued alongside Diddy and that is not true. He was just named as an example as to one of the very high profile, powerful people who Diddy had access to, which made people bow down to him. Um, Normie said the media is reaching with that Harry headline. No, like really, really hardcore reaching with the headline. Um, I had a couple people send me some Instagram things that they were saying, and I was like, do not believe that. That, that is, they are reaching. They are not like, fully giving you the information. They're making it seem so much worse than it is. Um, so I wanted to just address that. Obviously, we're going to talk more about Diddy later. But while we were on the topic of Prince Harry, if y'all are seeing that headline, I wanted to let you know his name was given as an example, not because he's accused of any wrongdoing. Um, George said they need to put their differences aside and come together. A family united will always stay together. A family divided will always fall. Talking about Harry and William. George, I really hope that they can figure out their differences, honestly, because I feel like normal families, you know, there's divides that happens all the time. But I also think what's unique about the Royals is they're really the only ones who fully understand what one another goes through. Like we will never really fully be able to understand and relate to what's going on with Harry and William. They're really the only ones who know everything that they've experienced. So I hope at some point they can work through their differences. But also if they don't, because I know some UK people are going to drag me for saying that. Like, I don't know what Harry did to William. Blah, 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 blah. 
I obviously, at the end of the day, am human, and I would hope that two brothers can find their way back to one another, but also I understand if that doesn't happen, that doesn't happen. You know what I mean? Jessica said they may do, but I doubt if Harry, I doubt it. Harry is a spare child, and Harry has resented William for years from Diana to now. Jessica, you might not be wrong. You're, you're not wrong. I just, there's so much. There's so, there is a lot of deep wounds. But, you know, I always have hope. I always have hope that in times like this, they'll be able to come back together because, I don't know, you guys know sometimes I'm naive. You know what I mean? Sometimes I like to put on my naive cap. And with Harry and William, sometimes I love to wear my naive cap. I can't help it. Um, okay, let's go ahead, you guys, and move on and talk about Lamar Odom and Khloe Kardashian so then we can get into the Kim and Bianca of it all, Taylor and Travis, and then Diddy and Justin Bieber. So... Really quick, because you guys know we do have a soft spot for Lamar Odom here in the house of, in, oh my gosh, here in the house of Hill. So Lamar Odom, you guys, recently sat down for an interview with E! News, and he was asked what he would say to Chloe if they ever crossed paths again. Lamar said that he would say that he loves her, that he's grateful and misses her and wishes her and her kids nothing but the best. He also went on to say, quote, I'm only speaking for myself, but it'd be hard to really forget somebody after you marry them after 30 days. It's probably impactful, you know, for the rest of your life, whether you stay with them or not. You guys know that I just, again, I love Lamar and I know some of you are going to think I'm a hypocrite for liking Lamar, but I always like to make the distinction the reason why I have a soft spot for Lamar and not Tristan Thompson is because Lamar Odom did a lot of messed up things, but he has admitted to all of them. He's taken accountability for all of them, and he's apologized for all of them. Tristan Thompson, on the other hand, we're not seeing accountability. We're seeing a lot of apologies, but we're not seeing any ownership. We're not seeing any accountability. We're just hearing that he's a changed person. I've actually seen Lamar's change. I've actually seen his evolution, which is why I tend to have a little bit of a soft spot for him. Gabby said, do you guys think Chloe thinks she's too good for him now? I don't even think it's necessarily that Chloe thinks she's too good for Lamar now. I just think Chloe has suffered a lot of trauma at the hands of Lamar. And I think that in order for her to be on a healing journey, she can't go back to Lamar. I don't think that she's too good for him. I just think that she knows it's best for them not to be together. You know what I mean? Um, oh, Jelena, Lamar was cheating on Chloe left and right. I mean, he has also talked about how, you know, Chloe was his wife, drugs were his mistress. Like, he fully admits he was not, he was not it. He was not a good husband. You know what I mean? But the reason why I can at least have some respect for Lamar is that he had, He's admitted to all of those things. You know what I mean? And even so, even in this new interview, he's saying, you know, I'm grateful for her. I wish her and her kids nothing but the best. Like, he's not being shady. He's not being rude. He's saying, you know, hello, we got married after 30 days. Regardless of if we're together or not, she's always going to hold a special place in my heart. Like, that is how I feel like you want an ex to speak about you. You know what I mean? Um, I saw somebody say, who do you see Chloe with, Marie? You know, Marie, I, I see Chloe with somebody who's honestly not in the public eye. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I think Kim says she wants somebody who's not in the public eye, but I don't think she really means it. Chloe, I really do believe she would do best with somebody who's not in the public eye, who's just there for her, and she really deserves somebody, honestly, who puts her on a pedestal. I know she drives us nuts. I know we cannot understand how she has forgiven Tristan Thompson time and time and time and time and time again. But, but, I still think she deserves happiness, obviously, and I really think she just deserves somebody who puts her on a pedestal because I do think Kim is a, or Kim, I saw someone say Kim in the chat. I do think Chloe is a ride or die, super loyal, super loyal girly, and she deserves somebody who's going to give that back to her. I see some of you saying Scott Disick. 
Uh, Edelon said Scott Disick. Tabitha said Scott loves her too. You guys, I just think it would be the messiest thing if Chloe got with Scott Disick. Like the messiest thing if Chloe got with Scott Disick. Granted, I don't think Courtney would care, but just like weird for them to explain to the kids. You know what I mean? How do you explain to your nieces and nephews that I'm now dating your dad? That's just weird. I feel like that's too messy, too many lines blurred, and just, I just don't think that that would happen, in my opinion, in my opinion. But let's go ahead, you guys, and move. He does love her. I think he loves her a lot. Absolutely. Just a messy situation. Um, okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Kim Kardashian and Bianca Sensory and Kanye because I want to make sure we have time to get into this, Taylor and Travis, and then Diddy and Justin Bieber. Um, a lot of you saying that Chloe and Tristan are still together. Y'all, I, I really need to believe that they're not. I need to believe that they're not. But I know why y'all are saying that, and I absolutely 1,000% get it. But I want to believe that they're not, okay? I want to believe it. But talking about Kim Kardashian, you guys, she is being accused of copying Bianca Sensory in her latest Instagram post where she is seen wearing only sheer tights and a fur coat with nothing underneath. Now, I cannot lie to you guys. That photo of Kim, it's in the thumbnail, is 1,000% giving Bianca sensory. 1,000% giving Bianca. In fact, when I saw it pop up on Instagram, I was like, I actually thought it was Bianca sensory. I was like, who on earth thought that was a good idea? Because now, like George just said, copycat Kim, now Kim is being accused of being a copycat and Kim is being accused of copying Bianca Sensory. And also it is not lost on me that Kim is sounding like a major hypocrite because remember, I filled y'all in on that report, I believe it was from the Daily Mail, about how Kim laid into Bianca about how she doesn't want her dressing like that around her kids. And I'm not saying that the kids were around, but I'm just like, Kim, how can you get mad at somebody for wearing those clothes and then turn around and post yourself basically in the same outfit over on Instagram. Ay, 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 just like not a good look. You know what I mean? Also, you guys, we hit over 300, which means we're growing, yay. Um, it is it is a little bit embarrassing. Jelena said, OMG, I'm looking at the photo. You're absolutely right. Superstar Bella said, Kim does not care who she copies. Nora said, Kim, your kids can see your posts. Like, especially North. You know North is all over that ish. All over it. Jeremiah said, I feel like most celebrities say and do certain things just for attention and then fake like they're upset just saying. Uh, Gabby said, I got to check that out. And then Miss Perez said, she is only sickly, sickly searching for attention. She and her family are, not, are no longer that relevant as before. I agree that the Kardashians are definitely losing relevancy. I mean, a new trailer came out like three weeks ago, you guys, and no one's even talking about it. I'm also giggling at Erica. Her bananas were out. Her bananas are out. Her bananas were out. I will say at least Kim was wearing a long fur coat, whereas Bianca was wearing sheer tights and a cropped fur jacket. So it was a little bit different. Um, but just the whole look is giving Bianca. And I just, I do not know why Kim would do that. I just... Oh my gosh. I'm like, girl, do you want people to drag you? Because that's exactly what's happening. Also, you guys, speaking of Bianca, I want to fill you in on a little more information um, about her family. This is a new report from the Daily Mail regarding her dad and Kanye, you guys. According to a source, Bianca's dad is now wanting Kanye and Bianca to come to Australia. But Bianca is, quote, hesitant to allow this because she knows how her father will react. The source said that Bianca's father still plans on having a sit down with Kanye and he will, quote, not be intimidated by Kanye's power or control. Apparently, Bianca's father was, quote, not necessarily pleased with his wife's recent visit to check on Bianca. He feels she, quote, enabled Bianca to continue doing what she's doing. Now, remember, whenever Bianca's mom visited her in Los Angeles, we did hear that she was there to kind of check on Bianca, 
see what the situation was and that Kanye was allegedly charming the mom. Now it sounds like Bianca's dad is like, yeah, whatever happened when mom came to town is not working with me. I need them to come to Australia. I need to lay eyes on my daughter and I need to have a conversation with Kanye. And honestly, I would love to be a fly on the wall for that conversation because y'all know in the original report from the Daily Mail, the first one we got about Bianca's dad wanting to sit down with Kanye, the source said that Bianca's dad wants to ask Kanye, would you allow your daughters to dress like that at the hands of their husband? And I think that is the best question that Kanye could be hit with. Now, for those saying Bianca's a grown woman, she's a consenting adult, why is Kanye being blamed? Why is her dad stepping in? She knew what she was getting herself into. She agreed to it. Yes, all of those things are true. However, I still think her dad is her dad. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean that your parents stop caring about you, stop being concerned for you, stop questioning your behavior. And so I still think I don't see anything wrong with her dad wanting to sit down with Kanye. And again, I would love to see Kanye weasel his way out of that question of, how would you feel if your daughters were being forced to dress like that at the hands of their husband? I would love to hear Kanye's response because y'all know if North was walking out with her bananas hanging out, sheer tights, and a cropped fur jacket with nothing underneath, you know Kanye, you know Kanye would be on his Instagram ranting about it for all of us to hear. You know what I mean? That would be everywhere. Kanye just absolutely going off. And I would just really love to hear his answer to that question because you know, he also has dragged Kim for, he claim he's dragged Kim saying she over-sexualizes herself. He claims that he's worried about his daughters growing up with Kim and Chris and all the Kardashians. So really, I would just love to see Kanye be called out on the irony of the situation. Um, Miss Heather said, parenting doesn't stop when a child turns 18. Miss Heather, Mama Hill says the same thing. Vicky said, Ye need, needs to keep that same energy when his daughters are that age. He better not say nothing. Dreamhaven said, I would like to think she's dressing how she wants. I find she looks exactly like Kim TBH. And then Adrian said, Bianca dressed like this before Kanye. I've seen some of the outfits she wore before Kanye. I feel like these are still a little bit more extreme. But... It's a, it's a very well-known thing Kanye likes to dress the women that he's with. That is, I mean, Kim has talked about that for years. It's not like that's breaking news, you know what I mean? Um, and again, she's doing it. She's going along with it. She's a consenting adult. I'm not saying that Kanye is necessarily the bad guy in the situation. I'm just saying I would love to hear Bianca's dad call Kanye out because I do think he would have an issue if it were his children my own personal opinion. Uh, Miss Ania, wow, I made it to my first live, 40 minutes late, but still, I'm usually an after watcher. Hello from Poland. Hello, I'm so happy you made it. Thank you for being here. Cass said, as promised, even though it was my oldest and not Jax, JJ came up to me during car dinner tea and yelled, mommy, I have to go potty. So I owe a super chat. <laughs> Cass, I'm dying. You guys, it's like this running joke for those of you who are new. Cass's kids, know when the most piping hot tea is being served and they always love to interrupt her during that time so it is just a running joke here in the house of hill so i want to make sure everyone's in on the inside joke Cass, i'm absolutely dying i'm dying i'm also laughing at harmony who said if i were a dad oh hell no and superstar bella said kanye thinks that they will both be fashion icons when they both look like fashion clowns Okay. Okay, Superstar Bella coming in with the tea. Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey so then we can get into the Diddy and Bieber tea. So it is TNT time, Tavis time, aka the best time for our happy hour hangs. Um, okay, you guys, so y'all know Taylor and Travis are currently in Los Angeles spending some time together. We talked about their little lunch date at Nobu Malibu on Monday. But earlier this week, they did, they went on the Nobu date on Sunday. And then on Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, 
they went to a gym in West Hollywood called Dog Pound. This is the gym that Taylor Swift goes to every single time she's in LA. She is a member of Dog Pound. In fact, if you remember a couple years ago, there was a report that Justin was at the gym and Taylor called and wanted to go. And so they had to wrap Justin's session up so Taylor could go. And it was like this huge thing that was blown out of proportion that Taylor kicked Justin out of their gym and they go to the same gym. Okay. Taylor has been going to this gym for years. Her and Travis were there together. And shocker to no one, TMZ tried to cause some drama and put out a report that Taylor and Travis made other gym goers wait outside for two hours while they worked out. So because TMZ put out this report that Taylor and Travis made people wait outside for two hours while they worked out, people started dragging Taylor and Travis, calling them entitled, selfish, rude, all of the things, because how could they make people wait for two hours? Well, the gym, you guys, the dog pound, which now I'm like, do I need a membership of the Dog Pound because they stand up for their clients? Honestly, possibly. Dog Pound came to their defense and put out a statement. They released the statement to Us Magazine saying, quote, at Dog Pound, we value our members' experience and have never had anyone wait outside for two hours. The narrative running in the media does not accurately reflect the circumstances. We respect the privacy of our clients and have no other comments to share. An absolute slay. I lived for it, you guys. I was like, look at Dog Pound saying, we would very much like to be excluded from this narrative, and I live for it. You know what probably happened? So the gym has a side garage that celebrities can pull into. The garage goes down so then they can enter the gym without anyone seeing them, paparazzi bothering them. I guarantee what happened is Taylor and Travis were finishing up their workout. People were going to arriving for their session, for their class, whatever. People were outside for maybe five minutes and TMZ drove by, took photos, and somehow it became people were waiting for two hours. And I live that Dog Pound came out and said, absolutely not. Um, also, you guys, a source did share more tea about Taylor and Travis in their little gym session to Us Magazine. Um, her trainer that she's worked with for years was there training her. Travis apparently did his own workout while Ta Taylor worked with her trainer. And the source said that they were, quote, having fun being in the gym together. They were in there for over an hour and were both in great moods. They like doing mundane everyday activities together. Both of them are on the same page about fitness during their downtime between work. I live for it. As she said, Madison, I've been up really early in the morning, my time zone, to do an online course I've been taking, and I finish a certain amount. I keep your lives as a reward after. Asha, I love that. School work and then the tea. School work and then the tea. Absolutely live for it. Gigi said, TMZ has the one cute lady doing Swift tea, but otherwise, they're all Tay haters. I don't even know that who that is, but I'm happy there's at least one non-hater at TMZ because this is insane. Um, I was just like... This story, you know when the gym is coming out releasing a statement, that's bad. Like if the gym is coming out being like, slow your roll, Tavis was fine, bad. But I love hearing that they like doing mundane everyday things together. I think that goes to show again that they have a very strong relationship. Also 333 people, you guys, manifest something. But I'm living for it. I absolutely love that Taylor and Travis are just living their best lives right now. I feel like they're kind of shacking up, seeing what life would be like when they're not working constantly. And I live for it. I'm just could not, could not be happier for them. And obviously, as you guys know, also, Travis did address his dad bod on the new episode of the new heights podcast we talked a little bit about this at the beginning but jason was giving him a little bit of a hard time after those photos of them in the bahamas surfaced and travis is like it's merch i have plenty of time to get in shape before football starts back up so i say let's let travis enjoy his dad bod you know what i mean 
let him live his best dad bod life. Taylor's living for it, which means we're living for it. And yeah, we love mundane activities. Exactly, Star 500. Uh, Jessica said, did you see New Heights today? OMG, love it. And all couples working out together. OMG, I feel an engagement close by. You guys, so do I. And I know people get mad whenever I say this because they're like, Madison, it's too soon. Madison, grow up. And I am a mature Swifty, but I'm also a Kansas City Chiefs fan. I'm wearing my Kansas City. Actually, it's not my. I'm borrowing Mama Hill's Kansas City sweatshirt because I'm obviously I'm at my parents' house still. I do have the same one. But you know, Kansas City and Anna Swifty, it's literally. I need this to happen. I need this to happen. Mellow Jello, love that. Hey Madison, I've been an after watcher forever. This is my first live. I'm so happy you made it to live. We love our after watchers. We stand our after watchers, but I'm so happy you were able to make it to a live. Um, Harmony said he's probably stronger than them anyway. Just leave people's bodies alone. T. And then Jelena said, ain't nothing wrong with being a hopeless romantic. LMFAO. Exactly. You know, that's how I feel. I'm a hopeless romantic at the end of the day. Hello, love a rom-com. Can't help it. Okay, let's go ahead and move on, you guys, and get into this. Diddy and Justin Bieber T. So, a bunch of old videos of Diddy and a young Justin Bieber are surfacing online. Videos from when Justin was 15 and 17. Um, in one particularly disturbing video, uh, it's a 15-year-old a Justin Bieber and Diddy, and Diddy says that they're hanging out, but he can't disclose what exactly they're doing other than the activities they're engaging in is a 15-year-old's dream. Diddy then talks about how Bieber is signed to Usher and how he had guardianship over Usher when he released his first album at 16. Diddy then says, quote, I don't have legal guardianship of him, meaning Justin Bieber, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. We're going to go full buck, full crazy. And Justin offers a going crazy. But I will say in the video, he's smiling, but he looks uncomfortable. You know when people kind of have that like weird, that smile where it feels forced. You know what I mean? Um, that's what he's giving. And then another video that's going around is when Justin was 16, 16 or 17, and him and Diddy are in the studio, and Diddy's like, you've changed. Why aren't you talking to me? Why aren't you hanging out? I've been trying to hit you up. You're not answering me. And Justin's like, uh, oh, yeah, I know you've been trying to get in touch with my people. I I'll give you my phone number. Just weird, weird stuff. Um, it's. I'll post a link to the video that I saw on Twitter in the description whenever we get done here so you guys can watch the video or just go on Twitter and type in Justin Bieber Diddy and it'll pop up. It's just one of those videos that you watch it and for me personally, you get a weird feeling in your stomach. You know what I mean? It's like you can't verbalize it, but it just feels weird. And that's how I felt watching that video. I was just like, hmm, huh, something feels off here. What do you mean you can't disclose what you're going to be doing? But it's a 15-year-old's dream, you know? And then I think when you see those videos and then you see videos of Justin in his more recent documentaries talking about how he experienced things that no one else should have experienced. He experienced things he wouldn't wish on anybody. Um, it definitely makes you feel weird. Uh, Cass said, as a parent, I felt so uncomfortable seeing that. Naomi said, did he have something on Justin for sure? Yes. Uh, did he's a creep? Epic Turtle said it made me feel uncomfortable. Uh, Amanda said, so sick to even think about. Makes me literally nauseous. Absolutely. Erica said that video was creepy. Diddy was way too persistent. He looked uncomfortable. I agree, you guys. I, I don't know. It's just, it's definitely giving the ick, Dreamhaven. Also, 333, you guys. It's just definitely red flags, Amy, is the best way, is the best way to say it for sure. Um, also, like I told you guys at the beginning of this, 50 Cent, y'all guessed it, is apparently working on a documentary about Diddy. He took to Twitter to tease the upcoming project that his company's been working on. 
Fofty said, this is going to break records when this drops. And a rep for his company did confirm to Entertainment Tonight that the documentary is in the works. So I will be very interested to see what 50 Cent covers in this Diddy documentary. I feel like it's possible it could be along the lines of, if you guys watched the Lifetime documentary about R. Kelly, I remember literally watching that in my old apartment Mama Hill and my sister were in town and one night we stayed awake and this is before they lived here. One night we stayed awake and watched the whole Lifetime documentary about R. Kelly and we were flabbergasted that so many people heard rumors about R. Kelly and whispered about R. Kelly but never did a damn thing about it and this Diddy situation is feeling eerily similar where there's been whisperings about it Nobody really listened. Nobody took anything seriously. And now all of a sudden we're all being basically, it's being shoved in our faces of like, hello, why was no one paying attention? Uh, Jenny, I want to shout out Jenny. Jenny is a law enforcement officer. So I want to read her comment. Parents, please watch over what your kids do. Being in law enforcement, I am, I being in law enforcement, all the disgusting things your kids are exposed to through these apps. She knows all the things. Makes me so sad. Jenny, I know you know probably more than anyone um, some of the sick things that are online right now. Uh, Storm Cloud said, Usher has done a video where he said he did things with Diddy he wasn't comfortable doing at 15 years of age. Yes, we discussed that briefly um, yesterday on that Vertical Live. It's an old interview of Usher. I believe it was from Howard Stern. Um, and he talked about how, yeah, he just experienced some things that were crazy. And I would, I will be interested to see if Usher comes out and says anything. Um, I imagine at some point he's going to have to, I feel like now these resurfaced videos, everyone being reminded that Diddy had, you know, guardianship of Usher when he was 16, um, I feel like eventually people are going to be like, okay, Usher, we're ready for you to weigh in here. But it definitely causes me to side eye the situation. Um, and I know people have been saying something with Justin and Diddy feels off. People have been saying that since these Diddy allegations started. But I think these videos resurfacing and we're watching them through the lens of these allegations against Diddy, they're definitely hitting differently. And it's definitely, I think, causing more people to get on board with the fact that, well, it's not fact. It's causing more people to get on board with the theory that something may or may not have gone down at Diddy's parties and all of that stuff. I don't know. It's, it's really sad, honestly. And what I think about too is I think about the Drake Bell situation, which by the way, um, that documentary is getting another episode. Drake Bell is going to do another special episode of Quiet on Set. But it makes me think of the Drake Bell situation where he talked about, you know, he experienced what he experienced and then he went on all of this self-destructive behavior. And if you guys remember, Justin Bieber went through a period of extreme self-destructive behavior. He was getting in trouble with the law. He was drinking. He was doing drugs. I remember at one point Scooter Braun did an interview and said that when Justin was on tour during that time, he would go into his hotel room to make sure he was still breathing. You know, when you think of that self-destructive behavior and then you look at these resurfaced videos, I hope that what people are doing putting together is not true because that's sick, but, um, it's definitely the optics aren't good, right? I feel like we talk a lot about optics. The optics aren't good. And again, no charges have been brought against Diddy. He has not been arrested. He has not been charged with anything. They just raided his home looking for evidence, but I want to say he has not been charged with anything. All of this is speculation. All of this is theory. These videos are just resurfacing because of the discussions surrounding Diddy right now. Um, let's see. Uh, Naomi said maybe that's why Justin wanted to protect Billy. That's what people are saying. Nora said, does anyone else know about Ren on TikTok? Seeing all these videos of these predators just makes me sad that even parents put their own kids at risk. 
These kids need our protection. You know, after watching the Quiet On Set documentary, it's, it's crazy because the parents that do speak up, their kid loses opportunities. So it's a really toxic environment, honestly. It's really, really toxic because I feel like the parents who take a stand and say something's not right here, their kid loses opportunities. So then the parent feels guilt because their kid's losing out on things because of them, but really they're doing it to protect their children. And then you have parents who turn a blind eye because their kids are funding their life and we're gonna pretend like, we don't see anything, we don't say anything. So I think it, it is, it's so hard. We have to remember, you know, these people are, these people who have done bad things know how to work the system. You know what I mean? It's, it's really, really scary. And I'm not taking any of the blame away from the parents. Again, why was Justin Bieber going to spend 48 hours with Diddy at 15? Was, what was his mom told? Oh, he's going to go. He's going to go work on music. It's going to be really important for him. Is she going to say, I don't want him to have this career breaking moment? Uh, no, of course, she's going to get talked into it. It's there's no excuse. I'm just trying to like offer a little bit of a perspective on it, obviously, because I just think it's a really bad situation. It's a bad situation no matter what. I think a lot of these kids who grew up in Hollywood, who got famous really quick, um, you know, we've talked about this. They see and experience a lot of things very quickly. And unless you are really on your kids ish, it's hard. It's hard. Uh, Jelena said they deserve compensation at the bare minimum. Oh, talking about the Nickelodeon people. Oh, absolutely. Um, superstar Bella said, once you become a parent, your job is to protect your child. Justin was just allowed to come to the U S with the predators. That is why he was so wild. As she said, kids funding their parents' lives is really messed up. Parents letting them act sing because they're gifted and could gain a platform is one thing, but the risk of them turning into cash cows, another thing. Absolutely. Naomi said those in power can, can easily manipulate. Definitely. Juliet said maybe there was no communication, like Justin didn't tell his mom. Exactly. And Katie Gomez said, as a mom, it's so scary and sad. Protect your kids. Protect our kids. It's why I choose to keep my daughter offline. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think... You know, I'm really lucky that I did not grow up with social media. Instagram didn't become a thing until I was in college. Um, I cannot even imagine, imagine being a parent in this day and age with social media and your kid, as Jenny was saying, having access to so many things. I mean, your job as a parent is now harder probably than it's ever been with social media. It's insane. It's insane. Um, but definitely hope nothing happened to Justin Bieber. I want to also make that clear. Like, let's hope these theories, these speculations are false. And let's hope that he is fine and everything's okay. And that's, let's just hope that for him. Um, but the video is resurfacing. I'm not going to lie. Optically don't look good for Justin or for Diddy. I think that's something we can all say. Optically, it doesn't look good. But again, I would like to say Diddy has not been arrested and he has not been charged. So, right now, they're just um, investigating. So, I feel like that is that is where we will end the Justin Bieber and Diddy situation. 50 Cent is doing a documentary. I will be very interested to see that documentary. You know I will be supporting it. I love myself some 50 Cent. Also, something I like and respect about 50 Cent is um, he does not shy away from exposing people. You know what I mean? 50 Cent is not afraid to be a whistleblower. 50 Cent is not afraid to call people out. Um, yes, he stays on Diddy's neck. Um, and honestly, I... If anyone was to do a Diddy documentary, you know 50 is going to expose a lot and expose it all. So I will definitely be waiting for that. And obviously, you guys know, whenever any Diddy updates happen, I will fill you guys in because I feel like we've been following this since the beginning. We've been following this since Cassie's lawsuit. So obviously, when any major updates happen, um, I will let you all know. 
You know what I mean? For sure. Uh, e. Dillon said, this is the reason Haley's dad asked for prayers. Maybe. Maybe. I will say the only thing that makes me unsure if that's what it is about is because we've heard reports that they were really upset that the dad posted that with rumors of them having marital issues. But maybe you're right. Maybe that's why they're upset. Maybe that might be some tea. Like, no one's supposed to know anything going on right now. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Marie said, did you see Sabrina Carpenter and Justin following each other? I think a collab is coming. Yes, Marie. I did see that. They started following each other. And you already know there's some headlines being like, Hailey Bieber cosplays as Sabrina Carpenter in her latest Instagram post after Justin starts following her on Instagram. Normally, I would be one to be like, oh, that's crazy. But no, I, I think that they possibly are working on something in the future. Um, but I think if Justin is kind of going through a lot of Diddy stuff, I think it'll be a while before we get any new music. If, if he is dealing with it, we do not know. Again, all we know right now is these resurfaced videos are causing us to question Diddy and Justin's relationship, given what has come out about Diddy in these lawsuits. Again, these lawsuits are in civil court, not in criminal. He has not been arrested. He has not been charged. I just feel like I gotta, you know, say that so everyone knows the facts of the situation. Um, but yeah, I'm also laughing. Freaky Walrus said, dang, I typed Fofty and my autocorrect said no, rejected. I, if you guys also don't know why sometimes I call him Fofty, um, this is a very niche thing. Vanderpump Rules star Lala Kent, her ex got into a Instagram war with 50 Cent um, because 50 Cent called him out for owing him millions of dollars. And he was like trying, and 50 Cent posted a screenshot of their text messages. And Randall Emmett was trying to reason with him and was like, I'm sorry, Fofty. And he misspelled his name. And 50 Cent sold t-shirts with <laughs> the text message that called him Fofty. And I thought it was hilarious. Um, so that's why sometimes I call him Fofty. Nora said, going to read my kids a bedtime story and hold them a little extra tight. Bye, House of Hills. See you next live. Nora, abso freaking lutely Please give your kids a squeeze from the House of Hill. Have a fantastic rest of your evening. Sleep sweet. Um, Amy said, I think Scooter is a big part of this. Amy, you already know, we've been saying that a reckoning is coming and I think Scooter is on that list of a reckoning. Just saying, that is my personal opinion. Imani said, I always wondered why you called him that. Yeah, that's why. It's because he, he got into an Instagram war with Lala Kent's ex and I just think that that is so funny. Again, you guys, 50 Cent literally posting screenshots of text messages being like, this man owes me money and he's trying to skeet out on it. So I'm putting him on Instagram blast until he sends me a wire transfer with what he owes me. Like, I stand. I stand, I stand, I stand. I can't help it. I live for 50 Cent. I absolutely love him. Um, yes, Tabitha said, reckoning list and junk, pu junk punch list. We know. We got to keep a uh, running tab right here in this head. Uh, Sam said, yep, I'm still waiting for scooter skeletons to be exposed. There's death something waiting in his closet. I agree. I agree. I'm not buying that he's just focusing on his role as CEO of Hive America. Not buying it. But again, just me personally. Um, all right, you guys, is there anything else that you want to discuss? Any other tea? Um, I did see somebody ask me if I like uh, Camila Cabello's new song. You guys know I'm not like the biggest Camila fan, um, but she is going in a new direction. She, the video, I like that it was like convenience store vibes, um, some good choreography. So, Definitely going in a new direction, which I think is good. She's got to try some new new things out. You know what I mean? Um, so good for Camila. I'm just not someone who's going to be like waiting up until midnight for a Scooter Braun release. Or for a Scooter Braun release. For a Camila Cabello release. I saw someone say Scooter Braun. Um, but that's just me. But I think the new song is, is good and good for her. And, you know, slay. Remember, we did hear she is in talks with Fifth Harmony about possibly finally getting back together. So... We'll see. Mary said, thank you for the happy hour, Hang Madison. Sending you in the House of Hill lots of love. These topics are tough to talk about, but I appreciate you speaking up. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Mary, 
Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here so, so, so much. It is tough to discuss, but I always want to make sure we get into everything because my job is to obviously fill y'all in on the headlines, what's being discussed, and then obviously we get to talk about it and share our opinions. And not everything is like fun and tea filled and a little salacious. Sometimes we're discussing real life ish. Um, so, Mary, I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy that you guys allow me the space to discuss these things with you and that we can talk about them respectfully. My other favorite thing, I love that we can disagree and we can do so respectfully, move on and keep a push in. You know what I mean? That's what's so great about the House of Hill. We get to have these discussions and it's the best thing ever. Um, Ruby Frank on 2020, the woman who, the YouTuber who was arrested for child abuse and endangerment. Um, I have not watched her 2020 interview, but honestly, my sister and I will probably watch that some point while I'm here um, because she's very invested in the Ruby Frank situation. Um, so definitely need to watch it. I know some of her calls from the jail between her and her husband were also released this week. And she was saying some weird things like God told her that she was going to lose her kids. God told her this is going to happen. So I'll definitely watch that and then let you guys know my thoughts. But Ruby Frank, crazy situation. Uh, Epic Turtle said, I really appreciate you, Madison, in the House of Hill. These chats are something I look forward to every week. Epic Turtle, me too. You guys have truly, 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 I have needed these this week more than you guys know. Like, I know y'all sometimes are telling me you need the distraction, you need the tea. I needed these as well this week. So y'all have been helping me heal. Y'all have been helping me get through stuff. So truthfully, these happy hour hangs have been something to really look forward to and keep me going. So thank you guys. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, Robert said, taking social media breaks shouldn't be criticized. You know, like, I don't know why people criticize Selena for that when social media can be very overwhelming. Nobody criticizes anyone else from taking breaks. Robert, that's a tea. People just love to criticize Selena for literally breathing. Selena takes a breath and people are like, she breathed wrong. How dare she? How dare she breathe in through her left nostril and not her right and then her left? It's like insane. Um, also, Naomi, thank you so much. Naomi said, ha ha. Okay, that is literally the cutest little gift, Naomi. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with that little gift. That is so cute. I love it. 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 Jelena said, Madison, what do you think about young Miami being accused of transporting pink cocaine and a contractual sex worker and Lil Rod, the producer that filed a, a case against City's lawsuit? Jelena, his law I will say Lil Rod's lawsuit is, in my opinion, like one of the craziest ones. That's the one where Prince Harry was used as an example. You know, I, I don't know what to think anymore. Honestly, I don't know what to think anymore because it just keeps getting crazier. It keeps getting crazier. I just hope that the investigators can do their job and justice for those who need it happens. That's what I hope. That's truly, truly what I hope because it's just getting crazier by the day. Jen said, I've been a silent watcher since your old job, Madison. Thank you for your positive energy and letting us all escape our lives with celeb gossip. Oh my God, yes. That is what I'm here for. That is what I'm here for. Um, Sacred Space said, Madison, what did you think about Shakira throwing a little shade to her ex on Jimmy Fallon? Y'all know how I feel about Gerard PK. He is on the junk punch in public list. So I'm always here for Shakira throwing a little shade towards Gerard PK. I will always be here for it. Um, Kay said, thank you for making my boring office job exciting. Love you. Keeping amazing. Kay, that's what I'm here for. I'm, I hope you, I hope I make your boring office job a little bit easier. So I live for it. I love you. Thank you for watching. Um, Amanda said, talking about who might be next on that list. Amanda, you're not the only one who feels like that. Rosabelle said, hello, Madison. Enjoy the tea. My first live. Have a wonderful week. Rosabelle, I hope you come back. On Monday, for Monday's live happy hour hang, please, please, please make sure you come back. Um, Tamara said, Madison, please don't be upset, but I have to finish watching tomorrow morning at work. I love the lives. You're the best. Tamara, not upset at all. Honestly, I have to also wrap this up. So Tamara, not upset. You always, you always share the lives as well, which love you for that. You guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Kendra said, I always look forward to your lives. 
Not gonna lie, since 2020, oh my God. 2020, we all struggled, you know what I mean? The lives got us through. George said, Madison, thank you for being here and making this channel and making our Mondays and Wednesdays a blast. Also, thank you for the message back on Insta. You're the best. I try, I'm try. i bad at responding to DMs, but I'm trying to get better. So, George, thank you for sending my family and I love during this time. I really, really appreciate it. And I love that you and your wife watch together. Like, truly made my day. Um, you guys have a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic rest of your week. Erica, I am keeping up with Vanderpump Rules as best as I can. Um, I know it just came out that Katie and Max hooked up. Which honestly, I know Katie's getting some flack. I'm team Katie, okay? Katie is calling people out and I'm living for it. So I'm not living for the fact that she hooked up with Max because he wasn't my fave, but honestly, I think Katie deserves a moment, in my opinion. Uh, but you guys, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Please, if you're still here, uh, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure your notification bell is on. Also, make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok at I am Madison Hill with two Ds. And you guys, if you're still here, Pinky promised me I will see you on Monday for another live happy hour hang at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. I will see you all then. You know you can also check out my merch store at houseofhill.com. Have a fantastic, fantastic rest of your evening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.